Hey friends, it's Sabrina. Welcome to the Claim Your Magic podcast, where I talk all about how to claim your magic and change your life. And this is going to be a super, super, super quick episode for the total solar eclipse that is happening, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, tomorrow or today. So I'm not going to divulge my plans just yet. Uh, I will divulge them on the 9th. (laughs) And part of the reason why it's going to be so short is I've just been focusing so much on my own practice and my own energy and my own incubation. And the vibes have been vibing. I'll say that. So for many of us in North America, we are actually getting a partial solar eclipse. And a lot of us as well are also getting a total solar eclipse. And so some of us are going to be in that path of totality, it's called, where we will actually get to witness a moment that I've heard from some of my clients and students and community members is fucking amazing. And so whether you are traveling to totality, whether you already live in totality and are just planning to you know, hop into your backyard and (laughs) take a look at the sky, whatever your your situation is with this moment, or I know a lot of my indigenous folks are uh, intentionally not looking at the eclipse because there there are are some superstitions in some communities and nations and tribes around looking at eclipses, around not taking photos of eclipses, around just kind of minding your own business during eclipses, etc., etc., So everyone really has got different approaches to eclipses and eclipse season. And this particular total solar eclipse is a special one because it is over so much of North America. And it's just doing this really lovely diagonal through North America. And so I know not all of my audience is North American. So I know there's some of you who will be like, I don't care, Sabrina, whatever. But for myself and for a lot of us who are in North America, this is going to be a really big moment for us just because it is so close to home that we get to experience this. In my neck of the woods, this is a once in a lifetime event, unless I'm going to go out of my way and travel to crazy places over the next decades to catch it again, who knows. And so for me, this is something that I do want to experience. And anyway, I'll I'll do my whole big recap on Tuesday the 9th, maybe even the 10th, once the eclipse vibes have kind of um, completed themselves a little bit. I'll divulge what my plans are. But for now, let's talk about you guys, which is why I wanted to make sure I record this episode before the eclipse actually fucking happens. So maybe you are traveling to the path of totality. Maybe you are somewhere that's getting a partial eclipse and you're planning to look at it do a viewing party, etc. So first and foremost, be safe. Make sure you are um, doing your research and finding those safety glasses that are for eclipse viewing safely. You can only take them off and look at it directly if you are in that path of totality when there is that few minutes of overlap. Everywhere that is getting the partial eclipse, you're going to want to keep those glasses on. And I think there's also some people talking about like, don't film it with your phone, like it could fry your phone. So who knows? I have two pairs of glasses, one for myself and one for my phone. So we'll see what happens. But do your research depending on where you live around the safety standards for the glasses. I got mine on Amazon, actually. um, But I'm sure there's going to be a lot of places that have a ton of pairs just giving them out last minute. At least that's fingers crossed. That's what I'm hoping for anyone who is a bit of a last minute bird, which I totally get because that's usually how I am, too. So no worries, no judgment. So first of all, Eclipse Safety, if you are going to go out in it, please be safe. And for anyone who is, um, oh, actually one more thing about that. If you're traveling to go to the Eclipse, bring your phone charger, bring some snacks, bring your medication if you need it, bring a book, bring a notebook, like 
bring water, bring electrolytes, like make sure that you have some like, contingency materials. If you are someone who is going to be traveling, just make sure that you've got your wits about you, you've got all your stuff about you. Um, make sure that no one is being sketchy in your vicinity and like keep your hands on your 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 items basically safety first my friends in like all regards so hopefully that's not a necessary warning hopefully everyone's gonna be chill and everything's gonna be cool but you never know like I've never seen anything like this in my area so I don't really know what to expect in terms of crowds or or lack thereof like I have no clue so I'll let you guys know how things how things go so for anyone who is choosing to stay put maybe you are deciding to stay home and do ritual and pray and meditate during that time then by all means like make sure that you're taking that time I if I had a normal job I'd be taking the day off work and I guess personally I am going to be taking the day off of work I'm not going to be answering any emails or any dms I'm not going to be in my community or anything like that I'm not going to be on Instagram so I'm going to kind of be doing a bit of a personal blackout on social media and everything so I want to get this episode out now for you guys so you actually have some something to think about if you're still kind of trying to figure out what does this eclipse mean for you. So obviously this eclipse is going to hit everyone a little bit differently depending on your astrological chart. So do your own research on how that is hitting you. I'm not an astrologer. Um, so please just go do that little deep dive. It should take a five minute Google if that is something that you want to go look into on how is this affecting you with your particular rising sign and your sun sign is what I would look into. Um, but also I want to say about this, right? So what is interesting about this eclipse is it's kind of like for everyone as a collective, it's looping us back into some of the issues that we were experiencing in 2017. So particularly August, 2017. And so I decided to scroll back on my Instagram today and be like, what the fuck was I doing in August, 2017? I don't even remember. I remember that my book, Witch Body, had just been nominated for the biggest comic book awards in Canada. Um, and the ceremony was, I think, in May. I didn't win, but hey, whatever, I got nominated. I was on top of the world. I felt awesome. I was also teaching at the university, so I was a big fancy professor. So I was feeling very important at the time. <laughs> I was like 27. I thought I was like the hottest shit ever. So I also, that month, decided to spend the entire month in England. And for no real reason, I ended up doing two book events, and one of those book events ended up getting me an invite to participate in a five-minute documentary that ended up being about me. It's got millions of views now. It's kind of embarrassing and cringy to look back at now, but whatever. That is how some of you guys actually found me was through that documentary. And those images from that documentary ended up in, like, plastered newspapers around the world. It was pretty sensational. But anyway, enough about me. So... Actually, I will talk about myself for just five more minutes just to get you guys knowing how this this eclipse is looping back to that time. So what's really interesting, maybe not for five minutes, maybe just two minutes. So that trip to go through England and bop around alone, completely alone, with no real itinerary. Like I, I had things booked, so I kind of knew what my plan was, but otherwise I was just floating around having experiences and getting in touch with my ancestral lands because as you guys may or may not know my dad was born in England and it's it was my first time visiting England since 2002 or 2003 when I was a little kid and I went and at that time when I was that age I had never felt so at home anywhere in my life I always felt very out of place in Colorado where I grew up I just no one looked like me I had a bit of like a weird British face that and no one really got my whole vibe but it was really cool to go back in 2017 for that entire month and get in touch with the land get in touch in my own way with my heritage and just bond with that land a little bit and just reflect on that whole everything and as you guys may or may not know, if you're at least bopping around my Instagram, you'll know is I've been drawing my next graphic novel that I finished writing. The main draft was done in 2019 and I've been sitting on it, sitting on it, sitting on it, and I've been drawing it now. And so right now it's just about halfway drawn, 
which is pretty cool. It's only about 10% painted, but I am making significant progress on this, and so this will be a bit of a graphic novel sequel to Witch Body. But the whole the origin story of that graphic novel that I'm working on right now, that I'm working on finishing now, and I'm planning to finish in the next month or two, the origins of that graphic novel are actually from that month-long trip in August 2017 to England. And so it's been really interesting for me to just scroll back and be like, oh shit, <laughs> the astrology is right yet again, obviously. And noticing the how this is looping back in my own life and how the seeds that were planted that I didn't even realize were planted in 2017 in August during that trip to England are now kind of bearing fruit as I'm actually working to finish the illustrations for this book. And I just encourage you guys to go back through your social media, whether that's Instagram, whether that's Twitter, I don't care what social media you use, go back through your journals, ask your friends, ask your family, ask your partner, like, and just look back, take some time and look back, what was I going through in August 2017? And how do I relate to those themes now? Are we seeing a resurgence of those themes? Is there some healing work that needs to be done around those themes? Is there some release that needs to be done around those themes? Is there some rejuvenation, reflection that needs to be done around what you're experiencing in August 2017 and how does that relate to what you're experiencing right now in April 2024? There is going to be a link there somewhere. You might not see it immediately. If you do, this is why I love the record keeping aspect of social media is like you really do get to go back and have that timestamp and remember with this lovely visual of like, Oh shit, that's what I was doing. So take some time to do that. Take some time to do that reflection on a more general note. I would say this is a really potent time of death and rebirth. Obviously not literally. We want to stay alive, touch wood as I'm superstitious but we're going to want to do some intentional release of our past self. It's an intentional time of pruning those dead leaves off of the plant that is us. Things grow better once we prune those dead leaves. And so that is a crucial aspect of our growth. We can't just grow, 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 grow without cutting off the dead leaves that inevitably happen. That happens to each and every one of us. And that can take the place of a relationship that is no longer relevant. Maybe we're getting a divorce. Maybe we're breaking up with a lover or friends or maybe even your parents. Big changes are happening. For some reason, I do feel this eclipse is bigger than any other eclipse that I can really remember experiencing. Maybe that's just because I'm so close to that path of totality. That could be why the energy is really uh, happening up in my neck of the woods, in my life, in my sphere. I don't know. But it is worthwhile to just work with this moment if you like as a time of rest, if you like as a time of rebirth, if you like as a time of banishing what no longer serves you. Very important thing to know how to do. And also to plant the seeds for rebirth, recycling, refreshing, recommitting to who it is that you want to be in this lifetime. Hugely potent moment. So whether you're going out in the eclipse to witness it, whether that's in the path of totality or somewhere where you'll get to see a partial eclipse, still pretty cool. So I hear, I don't know from experience, or whether you are just someone who is closing all your windows, shuttering all your blinds, and just having this cocoon at home where you're just deep in the ritual mode. That's cool too. However you're choosing to honor this moment, I wish you guys all of the best with that. I'm sending you guys all the best of good vibes. I apologize in advance for my social media blackout. Tomorrow, I will be back on Tuesday with Tarot for the Week Ahead and a bunch of other stuff. I do have a few emails scheduled to go out over the next few days, so keep your eyes out for those as well. 
and what else if you're not too sure what to do or how to work with this moment I would also recommend listening to on YouTube the tarot for the week ahead reading that I did on Tuesday or no not Tuesday Wednesday last Wednesday it's the most recent under the live category if you go to youtube.com slash Sabrina Scott just listen to that watch it through there will be some prompts for reflection in that live session inspired by the tarot about how to work with this moment, the energies of the eclipse that are happening right now. Okay, friends, that's it. I need to make this short and sweet. It will make sense why <laughs> later. Much love, happy eclipsing, however it is that you're choosing to work with and honor and be in this moment. Take care, friends. Bye.